All right, in my initial impressions video of the Apoca Duelist of Butterfly Swords, I used the term potential repeatedly. I also didn't do a lot of handling with these because I described them as being, well, extremely uncomfortable. And that was because of all of the sharp corners on this single piece construction. So I made a couple of modifications, not as many as I thought I would have to make, but let's take a look at what that potential turned out as. Starting with the scabbard. Now I'll do a section on carry and drawing and stuff like that, things I've been experimenting with, but I did a very slight bit of rounding on the G10 scales here at this front hook. Not much, because that's where the retention point is inside the scabbard lips. I didn't want to take off too much and make them loose, but it did make the release a little easier, especially since I'm using this kind of odd technique where I insert my finger at the front. Now using, as I mentioned in the other video, the same kind of opening I would use with a secure X grip where you push your thumb on the back doesn't work very well because you actually wind up pushing forward on the blade and locking that hook in even more but I've since gotten used to doing it from the front. And again, I'll, I'll show you how that works in wear and carry. But what did I do to the blades themselves? Well, first off, a little, little, little bit of honing. I didn't have to do too much to improve that edge. And we'll take a look at what the result was. But the biggest thing I did, which is not going to seem to be very big, is that I beveled all of those sharp edges. And I'm, what I'm specifically talking about is the front of the grip, the back of the grip, and the top and bottom of the hook. And I only broke the corners, basically. Took off about a sixteenth of an inch. Now, the reason why you're not seeing bare silver steel through that DLC coating where I, I ground and polished it away is because in order to maintain the, the dark aesthetic here, I just treated the exposed metal with some bluing, some super blue, and let it soak in. And yeah, the transitions are, are not very visible. So that, that turned out pretty well. You still see them a little bit close up, but not bad. I also very slightly rounded some of the sharper corners on the G10 scales. Let's take a look at the result. Okay, before we proceed, Mike's going to throw in, shall we say, an enhanced warning. In my previous videos on butterfly swords, I have mentioned it is not recommended to train with sharp ones because of the potential for injury. This is true both in flipping and in especially certain maneuvers where the blades are passing very close to, well, your arms and sometimes even your body, depending on the traditional forms that you're practicing. Now I'm going to, well, double down on this warning specifically because of the design of the tips of these. They are exceptionally acute, which means even the slightest contact I have discovered between those tips and, and any part of me, yeah, these will make you bleed. All right, let's talk about my wear and drawing deploying experiments. Now, like some of my other Secure X sheaths, I did try to put some belt loops on, on the side of the scabbard down lower to wear it higher on the belt and more, well, less floppy, shall we say. But they all failed because wearing them that high with the extra length of that blade, I just, I just couldn't get anything resembling a comfortable draw. So I went back to using the belt loop that it came with, which is actually pretty stiff. It's just not as floppy as certain other sheaths like this I have. So that's that's nice. And I also like the, uh, you know, the snap that it's got on there so I can loop it onto a belt without taking the belt off. Now, what I discovered in the brief time I've spent practicing with these, I like the most is having them here on the left hip with the guards facing, the guards and the blades facing to the rear. And there's two reasons for that. One of which is if I'm going to draw with my right hand and my strong hand, edge up, this reminds me a lot about drawing a Japanese style sword, uh, an Uchigatana for instance, where I could reach for it, basically reposition the, the scabbard with my left hand and reach in here, and as I turn my wrist, I naturally get my index finger in to break the seal on those feed lips, and 
yeah, drawing is drawing is really nice. And resheathing actually very similar where I can kind of feed them in this way. And and yeah, so that's really familiar from my EI training. Now with my left hand, if I need to draw with that hand, basically what I'll do is I'll cant the scabbard slightly backwards. My index finger again finds the feed lips to break that seal. And yeah, they're, they're right there. Now it's a little bit more awkward for me to resheath this way. So I'll usually go ahead and transfer them back into my right hand. And yeah, works pretty well. All right, let's talk about a lot of benefit for a little effort. Like I said, I didn't have to do nearly as much to these as I thought I would. A little bit of, little bit of edge rounding here, a little bit here, top and bottom of the hooks. And I thought I had to do a lot more, but oh my, just that little bit taking off those sharp corners makes these feel wonderful, has eliminated the majority of the hot spots, even when I'm colliding with stuff, and just makes these feel like, well, a pleasure to wield and move around. Yeah, just I'm really, really liking these with a little, little, little bit of adjustment. All right, let's talk flipping. But first, I'm going to repeat the warning because the tips on these are so acute. I've discovered the hard way is a whole lot more risks of basically biting yourself with them than with something that has a broader tip. So, so definitely take that into consideration if you're even thinking about trying this. I frankly don't recommend it, but you know, Mike and his dangerous fidget spinners. Now, when I originally did, well, my initial impressions video, I had a hell of a time flipping these, but just giving the top and bottom edges of those hooks, like I said, about a 16th of an inch of beveling, Oh yeah, that is that is definitely improved how they handle, how they flip. It reduced the drag on my hands, I think, and maybe a little bit the same with the grip. So yeah, they are they are flippable, but I do have to watch this a whole lot more because it doesn't take much to make you bleed. And the same thing's gonna be true when we talk about handling anytime these things are moving well inside each other but better than I thought it was gonna be. All right, really quick, I wanted to repeat some of the tests I did when I compared the Murasame to the Everything Wing Chun butterfly swords, specifically the trapping and blocking capabilities of the APOC. Now, without repeating what I was talking about in that video, trapping is, is kind of a misunderstood term. Think about it more like the bind in HEMA where by making certain kinds of weapon-to-weapon -weapon contact, I can get a little bit of brief control over the opponent's weapon and make that opening just a little bit sweeter. Now, two main surfaces to do that with. One would be the hook and the other one would be this space right here between the blade and the guard. With something stick-like, I did mention that this hook is a little bit shallow, but something going in here, yeah, that, that can get grabbed and then doing that twist to lock. I actually find that a lot more positive, probably for two reasons. One, there are sharp corners on the inside front and back of that hook. So basically the back of the blade and the, and the vertical part of the hook does grab onto wood pretty good, but I've also got the benefit of having that flat side which gives me a really good grip to keep it from twisting in my hands like the other two did. The Murasame I had more of a grip on because it's a wrap grip versus a smooth grip. But yeah, just even pressing on the side with my thumb, that, that gives me a whole lot of strength in the trap. Now, the more leverage I put on it, I'm still getting some bite on some of the sharp corners on my grip, but it's, it's not bad. What about the front side? Um, it's not huge, but it's not too bad. Again, I feel like just this being smaller overall, I'm not going to hold on to things as long, but I can get some control. How about something blade shaped? I'm actually not so worried about doing anything abusive with these as compared to the other two. So yeah, gotta, gotta still watch my hand though. Something coming into the hook here and then twisting down on it. Yeah, it's, it's a huge twist still. 
And again, because it's not a very deep hook, I feel like things will slide out easily, but it's doable. I also feel like I might have just a little, little, little bit more clearance between this sharp thing and my hand, just based on how the grip and the guard is designed. What about the front? Well, there's no sharp corner in here to catch something because they rounded it to prevent there being a stress riser in the solid construction. But there's just enough that, you know, something will get in there. It, it's going to slide off fairly easily, but yeah, I feel like I might have a little bit, a little bit of control. Let's talk about impact in a block. So flipping it into the reverse grip, I don't have quite the elbow coverage that I had with the other one. So yeah, there's a, there's a vulnerability right there. But let's take some sharp shots on it with a hard piece of bamboo. Again, I'm not so worried about damaging these. I, I think they'll hold up to some abusive testing. Not bad. I'm getting a little kickback in my thumb on the hook, but otherwise nothing uncomfortable on the arm when I hit this. Now, obviously, I don't have as much clearance between my flesh and what's running into this as I would with a wider blade. The other issue with that is, look at, look at my hand. That is definitely exposed right there because I don't have that extra, you know, nearly an inch of blade width. So that, that's, that's a little scary. D-guard's just fine. In the forward grip, it does have enough authority in the blade to, to, to take a hit. So that's not a problem. And again, having that flat side really prevents this thing from twisting in my hand. So yeah, not bad. Let's take a look at the paper cut. Oh yeah a lot smoother. How does it perform on some targets? Start with some tip slashing. Hmm. Let's try doubling it. Wow. Triple wall cardboard edge cut. Try doubling it. Not bad. All right, thrusting with the grain into the archery target. Okay, that was effortless. Let's double them up. almost effortless. All right, these did really well in the cardboard cutting tests. I've, I've been pretty impressed with them since I've rehoned the edge, but I also did a little bit to the DLC surface. In that initial impressions review, I went to cut through a piece of cardboard. It really bound to the sides of the blade and created this nails on chalkboard screech. Don't know how much of it actually showed up in the video. But let me, let me cut some more cardboard now. What I've done is I've buffed the sides with a 3M pad. So let's see if that's made a difference. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. These are actually quite useful as knives. All right, let's talk the new and improved handling, and then I'll kind of wrap this up before it gets too long by talking about my, my final impressions, or at least my impressions to this point. First, I have to say that wearing these is a whole lot more manageable than my full size sets. This weighs about two and a half pounds as a complete unit, but I don't really notice too much the weight on my hip, and it's, it is a fairly comfortable wear. I can move around with it, sit down, and yes, as I pointed out already, deployment is it, it's pretty handy. Next thing, very surprised to discover that held in one hand, these actually do still cut and thrust impressively well. 
Now, I did talk about wielding these in one hand in the previous video, how I've always found wielding swords like this to be an interesting exercise because it is twice the weight of what you'd normally have in one hand, plus the added exercise of having to really squeeze down to keep the weapons together. So for exercise, absolutely a nice practice, but I didn't expect them to be useful like this. At least not this useful. Speaking of useful, the blade performance tests I've done since I have kind of redone the finish on the blades just slightly and redone the edges just slightly, these cut and thrust phenomenally. I was not expecting how well they would do. Now, yes, they are a little shorter. They are a little lighter. They don't offer me quite as much protection. And I did give you the warning that with the tip sharp, I have to be a little extra careful moving them around. So it's, it's, it's made me be more aware, more careful, kind of like what my, my deer horns do for me. I, I definitely have to wield those with a lot of care so I don't snag myself. Now, does that shortness and lightness help me move them around? Yeah, and I do feel I have good blade indexing with the half moon bias, so I really do feel confident. Again, I have to be careful if I'm moving them close to my body or doing anything where a blade moves inside the arm for another blade or something like that. But otherwise, yeah, it's, it, they're, they're just handy. They don't have a lot of the weight and blade presence and size that the other ones have, but for how small and light they are, they're, they're pretty impressive. Which gets me to another question. Would I, based on this, buy another APOC product? And the answer is absolutely. And you, you may see future reviews if I decide to do so. But until then, if you have these or have any questions about these or, or what I've done to them, let's get our usual conversation started. If you have any other APOC products, I'd love to hear about those as well. Any recommendations you might have. Otherwise, until next time, thanks as usual for watching, following, liking, subscribing, commenting, and I hope to see you back for, well, whatever I get myself into next.